Buongiorno. This morning, today's meeting is about schools. This debate is going to complete a dialogue that started today about schools and methods in schools. Autonomy and equality in schools is a subject we've been very passionate about for the last years. We have very often talked about it. And once more today, we'll talk about education. The organization of school has to keep in mind the efficiency of education because sometimes schools and education are seen as separate but this is wrong we want to focus on this link today we have very important speakers with us first of all claudia giudici president of reggio children which uses the method of education used all over the world. She will then talk about their methods, which is the most common in Italy. For a very long time, we have paid attention to their experience and Claudia has already been a speaker to the meeting a few years ago, so thank you very much for being here. We also have Sabino Pavone, president of the Waldorf Novali School in Conegliano Veneto and vice president of Steiner Waldorf Schools Federation Italy. These schools are a very interesting version of, let's say, free schools. They have a very interesting and original foundation and impostation. We also have Giorgio Paolucci, a very famous journalist. He was vice director of the newspaper Avenire and he is also the director of the Atlantide journal magazine. For this magazine he has written several articles and he will refer to them while talking to us today. Last but not least, Gabriele Toccafondi, Under Secretary of State to the Ministry of Instruction, University and Research. He has taken part to the meeting very often and he carries out a great work for education in Italy. is one of the few politicians that really know what they're talking about. So we thank him for being here. Now, just a few pieces of information. First of all, one of the most common fake news about schools is we should invest more, we should spend more. Maybe we think it would be worth it. Maybe it's worth it for university, but is it really worth it for education in general? In this graph, you can see horizontally how much is invested in schools. And you can see that in developing countries, the more you spend, the more you improve. 
and the developing countries are the black line. Instead, on the pointed line you see developed countries, for example, Italy. And there you can see that even though you invest a lot of money, quality does not improve. Quite the contrary. You can see that when you invest more than $40,000 per year, quality doesn't improve anymore. So maybe employment goes up, but quality does not develop. Of course, if you know how to use money, then you will see an improvement. But if you don't, you will just throw away your budget. Maybe spending more for schools could also mean throwing away more money and wasting more money rather than helping schools. This is something very strange and interesting. So what can help quality? Let's start with autonomy. On an international level, autonomy is the idea that schools are not a centered and bureaucratic system of education in general. Schools do have a certain degree of autonomy, of independence. Horizontally, you can see Sorry, vertically you can see the level of autonomy. School autonomy over teacher salaries. And you can also see the result of certain mathematical tests. You can see when that when there's no autonomy on the right. When there's more autonomy, then quality goes up. These tests that have been carried out are objective. We can trust them. So autonomy in income does bring about an improvement. You can also see that if there's autonomy in the school programs, that you, then you can also have an improvement in quality. You need to assess these data, of course. You need to assess what happens in school. And schools that have a certain autonomy are more able to keep everything under control. These are schools that are able to decide on their own budget. A few years ago, our principals could decide only about, uh, about 4 percent of the school's budget. Someone th thought that it was even too much, but I do not agree. Every school and every principal should have a certain degree of autonomy in order to decide what's better for the school. Every school may have different Necessities, maybe some schools are in the plain, other ones are in the countryside, some schools are in the city center, other are outside the city, in some schools there may be a great number of migrants, and so on. Given these differences, you can see different results. You can see a great gap between these two figures. 
this graph instead is about equality. On the one hand, we have the percentage of private schools out of the general number of schools. On the other hand, you have the average share of government funding in every family has a different situation, they may receive uh, support or help. And when these government fundings arrive, then you can see a change. The worst result is obtained when there are only state schools in Italy. Intermediate results are seen when there are a few private schools and a certain amount of government funding instead when there is a lot of government funding and a lot of support to the families then you have the best results. We have to thank Mr. Luigi Berlinguer who introduced autonomy and equality in Italian schools. And even today, 19 years later, his work is still pivotal to our work. So you can see that autonomy and equality do have to do with schools and education and quality. It's not about private schools against state schools, supporters of autonomy against supporters of a more centralized system. It is about the general quality of Italian schools. When I was younger, when we talked about these issues, things were very different. I remember that when someone dared starting talking about equality. He was blamed. Everyone were against them. During those times, Catholics usually voted for the party called Christian Democracy. And it looked like a change would never come about. Instead, today we can talk about equality and schools and autonomy freely without having anyone that thinks that we're trying to destroy our constitution. We are going towards a new millennium. I hope that over the next millennium there will this issue will be freely discussed, but we're on the right path. Now I would like to ask Mr. Giorgio Paolucci to talk about the ideas he expressed in the newspaper Atlantide, in the magazine Atlantide. Buongiorno. Good evening, thank you so much for the invite today. I have a text here, a very brief one with some slides. I have two points of view in which one is explained internationally and one in Italy. And so, uh, in the newspaper Atlantide,
we talk about a school, in the world of, of education, the suffocating bureaucracy. Uh, a system that is very imperfect. And we have realized that not only in Italy, and uh, there is a way in which that is very diffused. Uh, a society which is very diffused, which is called an educational movement. It's a very diffused movement, community, that has been set up by teachers, which was done for uh, the young people. They are people to uh, be able to overcome complaints. And from this experience, we believe that this project, an institution like this, one should look at an issue like this with uh, sympathy. And so the um, educational movement that we were talking about, there are two examples. So in the Catholic School of Sarajevo, In the 90s, it had been, there was a lot of uh, suffering from the war, in the ethnic war, which had almost divided the Catholic population by half. Uh, there was the uh, Catholic schools for Europe. and all Muslims, Catholics, had participated in this. And uh, the, these schools were set up on the basis of the centrality of the human person. Uh, there is supposed to be a specific attention to the single person uh, to build peace. And after this country having endured war, uh, there was uh, an effort in the development to have to coexist together. An example of Sudar, a young uh, Muslim. In 1995, the parents were killed, and in which there was 70,000 people who had were killed in this bomb. And this young Muslim had decided to, uh, uh, to go to a Catholic school and was one of their best students. And so the education of the heart is the is the heart of the person. Out of 850 children, 250 were foreign in Palermo. In this context, uh, there was an interesting Sicilian writer, Bufalino. He says that instead of having an army of soldiers, we have an army of educators to de in order to defeat the mafia. He also says that the, the biggest resource of schools are the uh, teachers, even though there are difficulties in the actual uh, building of the schools.
uh, when this had happened, uh, immigrants didn't exist, neither did mobile phones. And for their passion of education, uh, they were still moved to be taught, to uh, have an education. In an interesting episode, there was a teacher who was passionate about biology. There was a third elementary class, which was a pretty difficult class. In the corridors, you couldn't hear any more the difficulty in that class. I was so curious that I decided to go inside to observe what was happening in the class. And they were dissecting fishes in, an, in a scientific experiment. And so many people, as they were asked, what do you, how, why are you doing this? They were asking, I want to be a scientist. This is an example of how a passion can grow and can, can transform the daily life of a person. how the passion of a teacher can transform the, the, the student. There are two examples of this, not only in public and non-public schools, but in the articles that are written in the Atlantida newspaper. We also invite to we have 20 articles in the magazine about uh, teachers' uh, experiences and witnesses and lessons. About the autonomy, the risk of teaching, the challenge of the multi ethnicity out of 815 uh, students foreign are foreign uh, only six out of ten of these uh, students are born in Italy in conclusion with this uh, issue of the Atlantic the newspaper It is the way to discover, to discover a passion to be able to build something. A way to also remove the mud from some, from us, um, from something in order to see something clear. And it's with this kind of spirit, enthusiasm that we had to make this issue of the, of the Atlantic newspaper. We invite you to uh, read this newspaper and to get to know, because the educational movement has been born this way and we wanted to has been grown to has been developed to invite young people to grow in this way thank you thank you thank you for the invitation thank you to the to Rimini meeting and mr. Vitadini it is for me a great honor to come back here today after two years. I will try to give an insight on today's subject, autonomy and equality, focusing on autonomy. I will talk about an educational project that was created in over 50 years in the region of, in the 
area of Reggio Emilia. We're talking about public and private schools. It is very important to me to talk about this today. And I would like to thank Mr. Berlinguer again for everything he's done. I am. I personally agree with what said Mr. Vitadini at the beginning. Usually, when we talk about education and schools, we separate organization and governance from education itself, from pedagogy, from the pedagogical aspects. On the contrary, I believe that they are strictly linked. And when talking about autonomy, we have to keep in mind about pedagogical social links. The city of Reggio Emilia has a very old tradition of work in the so uh, civil society. We think that education is a common good. This means that we have a responsibility towards children and our community. This is why we have created a very complex educational system. The history of kindergartens and preschools starts after, after the Second World War when we began rebuilding our city and rebuilding schools for our children with a new method. I think that this is what defines our pedagogical method and the way we manage and organize our schools. It is linked to a different point of view on the role of the state. It's not the state to provide a service, but in this case, citizens take upon the responsibility of building and managing new, different, high-quality schools for children. Citizens take upon the responsibility to take care of children and of the rights of their parents. This initiative, this project, uh, went on thanks to the work of several people, among which Loris Malaguzzi. Mr. Malaguzzi linked the social aspect and the ped pedagogical aspect. Thanks to the meeting between movements, institutions, and pedagogical aspects, our project was born and continues. The educational experience of our city goes on. This is where, why we can talk about equality and autonomy. We carry on a dialogue with other people, with institutions, and our dialogue is characterized by the link between the social, pedagogical, and uh, institutional aspects. Our kindergartens are based on the idea of relationships, on the relationships among children. A child is able to develop their own skills and to develop their own creativity. Thanks to relationships with other children and with adults, children get to know the world, ask questions, experience things. They get surprised and understand phenomena that they encounter on their path. This is a small clip of a kindergarten children from, from, from 14 to 22 months.
Look at what Matteo is doing. He's trying to look for the lights. Are there any lights, Matteo? Over time, we have observed and collected data and videos like the one you've seen. And thanks to this, we have developed our educational system. We have understood how to develop the skills and creativity of children. We have given adults the responsibility of remaining with children when they discover new things. Adults should also find new ways of developing the children's skills. They do not have a passive role. Now, this is a ring rose, which is kind of the representation of human relationships. Children uh, find solutions, discover, explore. In this case, a four-year-old has painted a ring rose. He tries to give the idea of movement, but he was not very happy with his work. When the teacher understood this, she asked him, why aren't you happy with your picture, which looks so interesting and so beautiful? Then the child wrapped his paper up and said, there, this is the ring rose. Now you see how great the creativity of children is. One of the educational systems used every day is creating a critical thought, the ability of judging what happens around you. We try to encourage children to develop relationships. Many times we ask children to paint a bike, draw a bike, which is very hard to draw. There is movement and other dif difficult aspects. In this case, you can see a draw, draw made by the girls. That after a long uh, project, which I will not talk about, they came to drawing this bike together. They found an agreement. Everyone draws a part of the bike. They signed it. And so they find the representation of their subjectivity. Instead, the group of the boys kept on fighting and didn't find an agreement, so they decided to draw three separate bikes. The teacher then reminded them that they needed to draw a picture together, not three separate ones. The boys kept fighting. At the end of the day, they found an agreement. They took a pair of scissors cut their bikes using the ideas of their friends and they combined the three pictures. Now this is one of the many interesting facts that happens in our schools. 
you see that every children has a social aspect, but they also care about their individualism. Now, children also love to play in parks, in playgrounds. This is where they build relationships, where they discover they love nature. This is very important in their growing process. So, adults try to encourage this thing and they try to find places when they can develop, develop and use their interests. They decided to create plastic trees to recreate what they saw. And teachers leave time to children. They stay with them but they do not find solutions for them. They try to help them realize their thoughts, make them come to life, but they do not act in their place. So children find different solutions. You see that some of them folded plastic, others uh, wrapped it. So you can see how the creativity of every children comes out if only they are given the possibility. Another thing we do is drawing on trees or maybe observing some the draw, drawing someone else has done and children take pictures, discover, and this helps them discover nature and trees. They interpret different signs which become shared symbols that they use to make up the so-called tree song. These are a few examples of how much children can see and how much they can recreate. In order to encourage this creativity, this will to discover schools and kindergartens take several measures. For example, they create a particular structure. They put children at the center of uh, the relationships with other people and with the world. Our schools want to create an environment where children have autonomy. Our schools are also based on a certain approach towards knowledge, an approach based on the relationship with other children and the knowledge of everything that surrounds them. It is also a, an approach that concerns several subjects and disciplines. We usually talk about a hundred ways children can ex express themselves, but not only children, even human beings in general have, have several ways to express themselves. In our schools, we also try to overcome the spoken word, which is the main tool used in every other school. In this way, everyone has the possibility to learn better, to use their own skill. Everyone uses a different way to get to know the world, and in this way, they can do it freely. Even neuroscience has approved this kind of method. The ways we express ourselves are the way we get to know the world. And we cannot exclude some of them. As educators and teachers, we have to give every children the possibility to express himself 
in the way they prefer. Aesthetics is also a very important element of our, of our work, as you could see in the previous picture. In the way our children discover the world, there must be a consistency in our choices, in the choices of teachers. For example, there's a particular teacher that is not exactly a teacher, it's more like an artist that teaches children arts and artistic ways to express himself. Now these are some of our, of our documents and data. We collect all of them and in order to better understand the process of every child uses to get to know the world. Our schools are in constant dialogue with our city. It is a fundamental part of our educational program. What is, point, is important to us is to build a school that is in constant dialogue with modernity, with our, with our times. We have to carry out and innovate, renew our educational processes. In this way, we can build a, an infant school and an elementary school that is not a tyrant, that does not program children, but that is democratic, based on dialogue, creativity, the respect of every individual, and on the right of every child to develop their skills in the group and then in the wider society. I would like to leave you with a last gem, a quote from Professor Malaguzzi, who says that working with children means facing very few certainties and a lot of uncertainty. What saves us is research, looking for something new, is not losing, getting to know the language of surprise that is always present in the eyes of children. We need to constantly find new projects and make new choices. This is what school and education is about. This is the optimistic approach used by our teachers, by our educators. We try and always have faith in the future and realize what uh, the best that we can. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? I see you so, this is the, the hour after lunch, isn't it? Why do I start after a discussion like this? From all the kilometers that we've done to come here, let's do something that will be so meaningful for you to listen to. If you were a class of teenagers, I would like I would ask myself, what would I do with myself and three o'clock a uh, class for three o'clock? What do I do in front of a class like this? Do you know what I would do? I just need two minutes to explain. Okay, that row over there, everybody get up. The uh, row in front, everybody get up. And the one on the other side, everybody get up. Anybody who wants to, feel free. In silence, I forgot to tell you, in silence. This is a very religious 
art artistic in silence. So follow me whenever you can. Don't accelerate. Don't accelerate. Thank you. So before talking to you about school, the first question that I was asking, what kind of attitude that me, uh, that other than myself, who has a question? So question that everyone is, what is the human question? And this is a question that is passed through the years. I can already have this question with someone who is learning about music. What are the fourths, the octaves? This is a world. It's a world uh, made of people of uh, with people with brains. But it's about uh, people who live in different kind of contexts. It's people, uh, children, there are children that have a very intellectual mind and or who are able to learn by doing things. Or there are children who are able to observe things and they're, but they're just great observers. How can we teach all these different kinds of people together? Uh, I wanted to talk about the pedagogy today, you know, how to center children, how to center even uh, teenagers. Thanks, but... how art is very important and how we can communicate and teach the sky and the earth. What kind of language do people, how can we teach them not only through the intellectual way but through pictures and art? They must be able, to, so children must uh, be taught by thinking and feeling and wanting. I will be showing you some slides, or you listen, or you watch. I don't do things simultaneously. This is a quality or a, a characteristic that that children are thought when they were young. They don't listen and see things simultaneously. There must be a very developed kind of eye. Before starting, I want to just thank infinitely uh, everybody at this table. I'll tell you with all my heart. I 
Etymology is very important. And to understand word by word, what is autonomy? An autonomy that I used to have when I was 16 years, 12 years old. One must learn what they love to do. When I say this, to look for something every single day, to uh, overcome, to always superate the, to always ha find, look for a bigger love than the love that you have for yourself. And I, I really appreciate uh, Vita Dini's speech before him. One who's look, I'm not a I'm not a very funny guy. And where can we find ourselves a bit more united? It's in the desire of doing good. I always esteemed the, these kind of people that had this kind of work. I've always esteemed someone like Marco Maggi. Not just to give life and, uh, partially, but they actually gave their whole life for education and to make schools. Now let's talk about the etymology of the words equality, which is in Italian is parita, that comes from Paris. The feeling of equality is contained is the in the word Paris. I am equal to you. I would like to leave you with this small part of our future, a small part that allows us to follow what we're trying to achieve. Please follow me. Equality is seen by, is observed in the low 62, 2000 and where it is said that schools are left with freedom in deciding what, what method to use. And private schools have to accept everyone that wants to enroll, even disabled students, as long as everyone accepts the pedagogic, uh, pedagogical method of the school. This is very important. Now, we have a problem with the, between words and reality because schools cannot actually use the freedom these laws uh, talks about. Look, this happens in every school, in every school, in public schools, private schools, Waldorf schools. I'm talking about every school because this is all about freedom. Either you act for necessity or you act for freedom. Either you do something because you really care or you do it because you have to. Why isn't there equality in schools? In state schools, you can retire very early. In private schools, 
the situation is very different. On the administration point of view, there is not equality because those who build a school have a lot of hurdles to overcome. 80% of state schools are excellent schools, but 25% of state schools do not follow the rules, are not totally legal. State schools have to respect the law. Our teachers need a particular form, uh, training in order to teach in a school where creation has to be improved. Teachers need a very specific kind of training, a training for that specific pedagogic because there is a particular approach to the development of children, an approach not based on the teacher but on the student. And how can we do it without a particular training? So I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Berlinguer, but there's not actually equality. The work you carried out in the year 2000 Of course, is very important, but after 17 years of your hard work, there is no equality. We are considered inferior schools, even though our teachers have to attend specific and long training courses. They have to learn about arts, music, in order to form our, ch our children. We had to overcome a lot. I have very often talked about this with different people. I have talked about our job and our situation. If we only talk about the economic aspects, then we will never find, find a solution. My school has three kindergartens and a whole elementary school. And several other classes. Our school uh, has the highest level of continuity of, than every other school. It's an incredibly complex and complete system. And nonetheless, we're not considered equal, so there's no dignity. Steiner is hated by many people, a name hated by many people. Even I used to be annoyed by this name, very strange name, Rudolf Steiner, a hateful name. I'm sure that someone called Enrico Giacomelli would have succeeded much more a funnier name. But what's important about our pedagogic is that we are trying to form our children the best way we can. Now, let's look about all of the schools. Where is freedom? From the educational aspect to the economic aspect, isn't freedom in, contained in the freedom of speech, freedom of free thought? Am I right? Is freedom proper of thoughts or of the juridical life? 
Is it in law or in our thoughts? Am I right? Freedom is in our everyday choices. But are you really convinced of this? How can we be sure that we ha all have equality? Tell me, please. Given this situation, equality is all about the fact that in front of law, we should all be equal, whereas we are actually not. So we have understood two things. Freedom of thought is contained, is being free of thinking what we want. Now we have to solve the question of equality and of brotherhood. Where are we really brothers? When are we really brothers? In the moment of need, when we understand each other's needs. In the mercy of understanding each other's needs. This is all linked to the economic aspects. Freedom of thought, equality in the law, in front of law, and freedom of thought, were at the base of the French Revolution. Let's imagine what would happen if economics became more important than law. This never happens, of course. But what would happen if economic invaded the juridical aspect? What would happen if the economic aspect invaded the spiritual level of our schools? This would mean throwing out the window everything we've said this morning. Because we could not choose what to do and what not to do. This doesn't happen in Italy. I'm sorry, this happens in Italy a lot of times. If you go to the Netherlands and you want to choose the pedagogical method of your school, then you can do it. And teachers receive a particular training to be able to do this. They are all trained and welcomed in the state buildings, in state training centers. Whereas in Italy, this doesn't happen. Now, try and do this. Try and make the spiritual level invade the economic level. And tell me, does this ever happen in our world? Look, we're talking about concrete stuff. Because spirit and soul organize reality, not the contrary. We see the soul of man made flesh, not the contrary. Uh, I would like again to thank again Mr. Berlinguer. Uh, sorry if I always talk about you. I remember seeing you with a certain person that was with you, who was kind of your guardian angel. And when you talked even for just three minutes, you, were, you made our hearts burn. 
Did you notice how Mr. Berlin went down the stairs after talking? He went down the stairs jumping, because when enthusiasm is boosted, then life and the desire to contribute to life is boosted. So, what was done in 1982? Of course, there's still a lot of work to do. But we have to remember that we are all linked to five words. No <laughs> burdens for the state. No burdens for the state. So what was done in 1982? In Conegliano, a group of men and women decided to create something incredible so that everything that was earned could contribute to the construction of schools, so schools in which someone could walk admiring beauty. Beauty is the first deterrent from doing evil. If you want to keep young people safe, then you have to show them beauty. Even in central stations now, they play beautiful music because they have understood this. Homeless people stayed there listening to great music and they were calmer. We have found out that music and arts do educate the person. We have invited Mr. Berlinguer three times. As well as we have invited many more people that have come to see and listen to what we do. We built this school with the money of a company whose manager decided to use the whole budget to build a school, thinking that the real legacy that we leave when we die is everything that's done after we transform our money into occasions into opportunities. So, Walter Waldorf Steiner was built thanks to this company that used, used their money to form thousands and thousands of teachers. Our first school, I started in 96 as a cook in one of these schools. And then I became a teacher, receiving a proper training. And this is how the school, my school, was born. The economic field must support cultural life and the cultural aspect of life. We need a great social support to our commitment. I would like to leave you with what I think. Families do support our schools, but what families? Everyone th says that all the families that attend our schools are very rich families with cars that cost more than 40,000 and 50,000 euros. But 
please come and see how many parents work in our schools, clean our schools. They organize bazaars, flea markets. They sell old clothes to poor families that cannot afford such good clothes. Come and see how much work they do. This is how you could change your mind. Many say that private school and our school is only for rich people, but this is not true. If this happens, it's not our fault, but a great school does work when we work with our hearts and we put all of our soul in it. Thank you very much. You're very kind. I hope that in the future I will see some of our of our work actually realized. Now, you see how this graph shows that education cannot be separated from vocation. There are a lot of children that are smarter than us. This vertical line represents the self of man. And there is only one for each one of us. No one will ever be like you. But the thing is, this is what gives us dignity as human beings. What gives us dignity is the vocation to service, to serve in other people. And those children who do not see this, who do not feel this vocation, then they will not have learned anything. Many people try and work just thinking about themselves without being bothered by anyone or anything. And it is a very common approach. But instead, we should change our approach and our minds. We should always keep in mind freedom and love. You cannot love without freedom, and you cannot be free without love. So thank you very much for your attention. After being woken up uh, by Pavone, I want to give you two uh, preliminary uh, points. One, two of the argument that we've even already talked about. There is not a... There is a, a real and a cultural starting point of a path for equality. We can say that this country uh, doesn't have an, an equal uh, choice of for freedom. The options are small, are limited for parents. One should have freedom in uh, being able to choose a type of education for each of their children. What is the theme of the inequality? Actually, so should we improve this inequality, or is the theme? The theme is really about the actual choice of freedom for the parents. So important, 
point. School is, may, is done for kids, obviously. That's a reasonable point. Look, I, I say it as the undersecretary of instruction. So it's good to take note of this. And kids in schools learn how to make a constructive opinion. Do they make a constructive opinion of when they're kids or when they or to become adults? What seems to lack a lot is the uh, the adults that aren't able to answer the qu uh, kids' questions. So this is a problem for parents and also internally into the school. So going back to our point, school is made for kids. Uh, we also, the second point is that we use experience as a method So reality is the one is the one that there is, or is it something that is imagined is um, thought of? I in these last four years, I visited two hundred schools physically, public and private, and I discovered a world, a new world. And I was reassured that school is for kids. I've always been taught that uh, the object is always imposed, that the eye is always imposed by the object, not the subject. A child should always be able to uh, learn how to change their position. And this is where I think the school has to learn to develop on. In ex through experience, uh, through experience, one must learn that it is not just experience that one can learn from. There is the difference that one can, that there is a difference between learning about H2O and actually drinking water. And so in this way, autonomy and equality, it means that the root is that we need to start from uh, experience. So it's about having ideas, but also looking at things concretely in reality. If we do everyone, if everyone in this country does this, it would be ideal. We must use experience as a method. This is not just an, uh, an idea of Catholics. We actually ha have been united and we gathered together and talked about this. And we understood that this is a, a history that our country needs to build on. We need to start from the beginning to respond to these kind of needs, not just thoughts. So equality and fraternity is made in this way. We must respond to real needs. We need to start from the real needs of of humans, not just of, ma of men, not just um, experience. We have a kind of cult, we have a cultural tax, very, very low, very, very low cultural tax. Cultural knowledge, very, very tax, but very low. So for the first point, point that we must discuss on is to tell, to explain, to show people that, that we need equality.
so if not reality, it is not, and it will not become an ideology. It cannot be a, because it cannot become a ideology. We have lost, we have lost a lot of taboos in this way. There's been a lot of taboo about, especially on the school. After 25 years, we have finally put resources in the actual uh, theme of schools. We had given uh, permanent jobs to people. to collaborate schools and to form these jobs because we believe that it is all through experience of these teachers, of these people, um, that can really uh, make this a positive development. So we have changed something very different in giving, in doing this. I'm going to ask you to show you this uh, slide, which will help us to understand. We have been able to achieve these kind of results because of a seed, due to the works of uh, Luigi Bellinguer. In the last 10 and 15 years, there has been a block. We have um, changed the, changed our direction. We have been working for the more stability of our resources. We have to either change our political uh, ways or come back to this. So the first aspect, in 2017, we had established from 2016 uh, a budget of uh, 50 million, of 500 million. From 2006, we've also made a fund of uh, for the disabled. These resources from 2006 have been created due to a visit that we did to a school. Do you understand by reality is the method? You can't uh, stay still when you see these things. So we had gained, there was an, uh, an increase of 23.4 million. This is a great help for the disabled people. This is a great help for the teachers and the parents. But this is just a starting point. In two years, something has already changed on the equality of schools. This is a great element of uh, the equality in schools. Of course, it's not the solution. Because in all of this, there have been families who have said that, look, I don't have enough money for, for supporting my disabled child. In the um, maternal schools in 2017, uh, there has been an increase of 50 million euros. So I see the glass that is half full, very optimistic view. You know, because last year there wasn't even a cup to fill. We haven't stopped here. 
We have also inserted some uh, cuts, some fiscal cuts that have happened. In, so we have predicted that in 2019, uh, there will be an increase of 800 euro. For the first time after 70 years, we the state starts to change direction. The money that the family pays for your child, the state finally recognizes that this is a public expenditure. So it is economically something that doesn't cost so much. Comparing uh, school and work, in collaboration of school and working. We have been working with two uh, ministers. And in the school bonus, uh, which is basically a way that um, someone contributes or donates uh, to schools and saves a lot of money. For the private schools, There's 456,000 um, and 800,000 uh, for state schools. Now the state recognizes as a real um, expenditure for them. especially for uh, secondary schools, in which we have in which there is a boom in subscriptions of when people are trying to um, take exams for the state at the end of their education. And we have also revoked 47 bills on uh, school equality. So this is a real uh, freedom in schools, not just because there is equality in schools. To obtain these kind of results, even in political on the political aspect, there are so many reasons, not just for in Catholic reasoning, but by actual people who had always had a dialogue with reality, who were always experiencing things in reality. People who were uh, collaborating with uh, state schools and who were involved in the growth of uh, students and who were listening to the questions of the students. And this is the great system. So this So we were able to obtain these results because of real concrete experiences.
It's just now that we are in a kind of phase in which we need to understand how can we uh, have this uh, freedom in schools and how we can try and achieve this freedom and equality in schools. Because uh, for my children in my city, uh, I want my kids to have um, free choices in their kind of education. Let's not wait for someone to solve our problems. We need people who manage these schools and who teaches children. We need them to say, we need them to declare what is the equality and autonomy in schools. We need to say this to, because we need to say this to politicians, to schools, to families. And we need to dialogue about this. Uh, this is also to be discussed in before elections. And if somebody uh, loves someone, then they will be uh, thirsty and will demand to have the, will want to move for this. I don't know whether to get up or... I didn't think I was going to say anything, but these are important uh, issues. First, I want to express and, and say to Gabriele Tocafondi, why free pon? Why are state schools the only one to receive this PON, P-O-N. We need to find a way for which the ones who do not respect the law are punished. Well, Luigi, in 2014, Italy signed an agreement with the European Union in which PON founds could not be used for private or public schools. So our government had to insert a bill, a law bill, so that we could go and negotiate with the European Union to change the situation. Our Ministry of Education is working hard. We have to do a lot of work for state schools Certain Article 2, so that every school knew that part of our resources that we use for schools could no longer uh, be exploited. It looks easy, as you know very well, given the work you did in Italy and for Europe, but, you know, easy things very often become complicated, so there's a technical explanation. Well, who signed this agreement with uh, the European Union violated Law 62, and our people, our Italian people, must know when they go to vote the choices that were made. We cannot do anything 
and avert our eyes from what happens. Well, just check on Wikipedia who was in charge in 2014. Now, I would like to add something else. As you know, when I was in Parliament in the year 2000, from during the years 1999 to 2000, I supported what then became Law 62. And in Parliament at that time, there were even people that do, did not support this kind of law. In Parliament, nonetheless, uh, in Parliament, we got the majority and this, the law was passed. There is a constitutional reason for which we decided to approve this law. I felt responsible to propose this new law because the Constitution asks for this. Art according to Article 33, every student, every school, every private school has the right to be treated equally. to be treated equally. And so now we have to see how this was all trans transported into practice. There was a lack of such a measure in our government, and I did this because of our constitution. And we had to work a lot in order to achieve what we have achieved. But referring to what was said, no burdens for the government, for the states, this doesn't mean that our state cannot give money, otherwise it would, this would have a negative meaning. But it means that who asks for mercy or for charity cannot expect money. Now there were a lot of and difficulties that we had to face that changed uh, things a little. But we have to remember that privates have the right, not only the ability, the possibility to fund school. It is a constitutional right. And the majority of Italian voters do not know this, are not aware of this. And we make it so that everyone knew about this. We managed we managed to make Italian people aware of the fact that Special ed schools are as important 
of course. Siamo riusciti a convincere la nostra gente gli elettori. We managed nostra, to convince our Italian voters una concezione that educativa non sia soltanto rispettata education nell'ombrello della is not only about the box we very often put it in. It's not only about state. But many people still are not aware of this. We have to talk about this more often with a totally different cultural approach than the one we had over the last years. This means that there is a very different situation in every country. Every country has their own culture. Schools are managed in different ways. But in Italy, why do people choose a known state school? Usually this is linked in by people to the presence of and the actions of the Vatican. In Italy, we very often believe this, but we have to understand what makes the difference and what makes a family choose a different school from state schools. What makes this difference? It's hard to say. It's not clear. We often believe that in state schools everyone is on strike all the time. But still, we haven't solved the issue of creating a common social conscience. And the issue of, cre of creating a real level playing field for every school. Yes, there may be, the state may intervene too many times in Italy. This happens a lot of time. But it is not only about this. I believe that we are need to find the reasons of this choice and what's, what gives this choice dignity. Now, this is the first problem. So second point is that, Giorgio, I don't know if you had made this co uh, concept before that I'd gotten from the meeting. It's about the uh, autonomy and the equality. And th I'm sorry, I'll, thank you for your patience. There's something that I haven't really uh, digested. It's the autonomy. So it's what the educators think, and what does the people? What do the people of Italy think? This is the cliff-hanging uh, decision that uh, people have to make about the autonomy.
but the autonomy has not matured or grown enough. And this is an important uh, fact. But it hasn't matured also in the, uh, in, uh, for the parents. This experience has developed, but it's still not totally complete. Because the choice has a meaning the fact that we can choose our type of education. Seven, only 700 years after this blessed country, uh, after the birth of the Italian language, have we been able to have the Italian language? And we have still remained divided, as always. It has brought us to a certain point. But it has been able to use the idea of the school to unite this kind of uh, education. This process has happened, but it has been bureaucratized even more. And a hundred years after this, wouldn't be a school if it was bureaucratized in this way. And the idea had been used for these single institutions in the school body. The Our schools are too bureaucratized, and this has ruined a lot of its aspects. This is a great problem, a great issue, together with equality and so on. There are several issues. We have worked on a lot of them through several laws, several bills. We had to think about everything, to talk about everything. We changed school. You need to spread culture, not only to make it so that children can count, can write. They also have to be able to sing. They have to know music. So it was necessary to change school. As well as we, as it was necessary to start changing our school programs. Thanks to all of this work, now we can talk about equality. And about autonomy. The etymology of the word autonomy is very important. because it's all about finding, making your own choices. We have to spread culture in our schools. 
And schools now need to be more flexible and include new elements. And about this, I can say that at school I, re I studied by heart all the names of Italian rivers. The rivers around the river Po, all the affluents. Um, but once my mother said, let's go to visit the river Tirzo in southern Italy. And I had no idea what it was. Now I know that it is an incredible, uh, incredibly important river in Sardinia. But all was centered on the region I lived in. And I didn't know anything else. So this is why we have to spread, to widen the culture that is taught in our schools. I really thank you for inviting me here, for, for giving me the possibility to talk. I really have nothing to add to what's been said, but the fact that I took part in a meeting about equality in 87. So today I celebrate my 30th year of fighting for freedom. And I hope that over the next 30 years, we will have achieved a real equality in schools. Even if it will take 30 years or more, let's not give up. But let's hope that this will, will all end before the next 30 years. Now, I would like to emphasize the fact that this year you can donate to the meeting because this is the only way we can support it.